So in this video, I'm going to show how to create an, uh, arg or an org mode file with R code inside it and how to run that file. Um, in another video, I'm going to show how to tangle the code and run it in an Emacs shell. Now, this is going to be a little faster um, than some of the other files. Uh, there's also an assignment which you can look at in GitHub, which is slightly different from this because I've shortened the presentation a little bit. Important condition is that you have to have the R program installed. And um, I'm showing in another video how to do that. And you must have my emacs.emacs file loaded by emacs, which is also something that I show in another video. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to start a command prompt um, uh, here. And inside the command prompt, I start emacs. This loads my .emacs file. Um, in another screen. So I'm going to bring it over to the screen, make it a little larger, and then disappear in my buffer. So uh, first thing to do is uh, go to the home directory. In the home directory, I'm going to um, start a new directory, a working directory. I could, of course, do it here as well, but I'm going to put place plus, and uh, the plus sign here leads to create directory. I'm going to create a directory called org mode. Um, it appears. Um, you can see that from the beginning, here's a D for directory. And it's also, it also has a different color than the individual files, like this one or that one. I'm going to enter on that directory. There's nothing in it. I'm going to create a file, Control X, Control F. Uh, I call the file first. Um, actually, I could just call it um, empty cars. I could call it first because that's what I did. First dot org dot org file. Now. Um, as soon as I type a character here um, and I go back to the buffer, Control XD, I can see that the file is here. But until I press G, uh, this will not refresh. The um, hash mark here says that the file has been started, but not um, finished, not saved. So I go back with Control XB to my buffer, first.org, and I type a few control characters, hash mark plus. This um, is the character to let org mode know that. I have some meta information to share, in this case, the title, my first org mode file, then the author information, author cap, caps, by the way, uh, capitalization doesn't make any difference here. I just do this to, to distinguish it from the rest of the text. And um, then I begin with the headline, um, my first org mode file. Um, so this headline will only work if it is formatted like this. So this is the control character. If I delete the control character here, it just returns to some normal text. Uh, it won't be recognized as a headline anymore. So let's start with the code. You see the indentation is automatic. I go, I enter, and the indent is automatically preserved. When the file save the file in the, in the middle between the Control X, Control S. And then I begin my code chunk, which is uh, again another control character. In this case, the keyword is begin SRC uh, to begin a source code block and end SRC to end a source code block. All well, the statements are in between uh, these two uh, control lines. And uh, after the begin source, header information is placed. Uh, to do this, just to run this um, in the uh, uh, in Emacs, I, the only thing I need is uh, information about the language, in this case, R. And this uh, has to be surrounded by space. So every every um, keyword and every value has to be surrounded by spaces. And now comes the first keyword, session, um, and the name R. So this means, um, this means that a R session is being started, and I'm giving it the name star R star. It's its own buffer. And then I want to put results out on the screen in a raw format. So not any, any special format, just as they come right out the, the R program. And that's it. And um, in this case, I only have um, um, two lines I want to put in. First of all, a comment, print the structure, uh, structure of, uh, of empty cars, the empty cars data set. Data frame. So it's a bit small here. And as soon as I press enter, you would see that the indentation is uh, should be, will be preserved. Actually, you see more. 
because I pressed, I entered session in the header, I'm immediately asked if I want to start an R project directory. So even without executing this, um, I get a, an R session. And this just happened. Um, I could so see it in the echo area. If I go uh, Control XB, open my buffer list, I see that I now have this buffer. And this is what I did with the colon session R. If I go into it, just by pressing enter on this line, I can see my R program. This is my R program, which I just started. Yeah. It's, it knows also which working directory I am. However, I don't, be, don't want to be bothered with this console. I'm working in an Emacs um, literal programming file. We have some text here. This, we need this for the comments. This um, org, this, the following code chunk, the following code chunk prints um, the structure of the prints of the built-in data frame empty cars control character empty cars to display this later in the computer font I press Alt Q to automatically um, wrap the code um, Prince instructor of the grid data set empty cards, uh, and that's this, that's that, that's it. And if I want to name the code chunk, I can do this too. I can add some more control characters, namely like name str empty cards. Um, that gives this um, gives this code chunk a name, and then I can link to it. The following code chunk. Um, this is the language double the double square brackets in order to put a link in an inside link. And I name it str empty cars. And as soon as I close these, uh, this link with two square brackets, uh, the link appears. I do Alt Q again to uh, rewrap my text. And what you see now, if I go with the cursor onto this link and I press Control C, Control O, which is the command for follow link, it will end up on the code chunk. Yeah. So this is quite useful. There could be a lot of text in, in here. I'm in this. Uh, I'm in this text, and I read this, and then suddenly somebody writes about str and cars. I would like to find this. Control C, Control O, and I get to the to the, to the code chunk. And I delete this stuff by pressing um, Control Space Bar here and going up, and then just pressing Control D. Oh, sorry, that didn't work. <laughs> I have to do backspace to do this. Okay, um, now we have one comment and we have one command, which is structure of empty cards. That's all we want to do. Yeah. And as soon as I press enter, uh, the indentation actually works. I don't like this particular indentation though, so I'm going to, it's something that you can draw with the .emacs file. Anyway, we're done. We've got the code chunk. We've got the necessary um, information. We already started the session. Um, which, if the session hasn't started, now executing the code chunk would start another session. So we're going to use the command Control C, Control C here at the end in the script to execute the code block itself. To do that, the buffer, the cursor has to be anywhere in the buffer. Uh, sorry, anywhere in the code chunk. Anywhere here will be to do fine. Control C, Control C, and here is the result. Now uh, here's the problem. Um, there is a mistake. It actually doesn't show for some reason. Oh, I see. What I forgot to say is uh, results output. Without actually putting output in here, it will not work. Um, not raw. So I'm doing this, this again. I saved it again and I will do Ctrl C, Ctrl C, and now it works. I don't know what I was doing with the raw. Um, in fact, um, test that out and see what happens. Yeah, this is the difference. So the difference is that this is sort of pre formatted, as you can see. It's pre-formatted. Um, uh, it's a pre-formatted uh, output. I'm just going to delete this again, the whole thing, and show you again. With output, you get this. You can see there's a slight formatting applied to it. If I add the attribute raw, so I have now two arguments to the results keyword, and I do again Control C, Control C, I get raw output. But I still, what I still get is the uh, results buffer. Um, uh, in here. Now, why would I not do raw? Because I can do the following. I'm going to do that again. Uh, uh, sorry, whenever I do that, of course, another result section is uh, started. So I'm going to go back uh, 
And what happens here is now I can close these results right? because the formatting without raw means that I automatically, uh, when the output is longer than two or three lines, automatically get it as an example and can hide it if I want to. Now, if I'm interested in exporting this whole thing to HTML or PDF or anything like that, I add exports both. This has the effect that both the uh, uh, both the statements, the R statements, and the output here are going to be exported. However, all the characters that you see, the control characters that start with hash mark plus, are not going to be exported. And I'm going to prove that to you. I'm going to type control X, control E. Control X, control E brings up a rendering menu, so the export dispatcher it's called. And I can type, for example, HO, which means um, printed out as uh, HTML. And in another buffer, another sorry, in another window, uh, this was just created. So this is my, um, this is the file I just created with one, basically one keystroke. And this is something I can nicely print. And you can see there's the code and there's the output, but none of the control characters will appear. Okay, I'm going to delete that. And uh, in the next um, video, I'm going to show how to generate R code from this same, very same code chunk.